Hello and uh, welcome to the latest episode of the Good Grand Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Uh, as you can see, once again, in uh, another different location. Um, if I keep this up, we'll be shooting an episode in, uh, in, in every room in the house. And, but well, it's not a mansion. Um, anyway, hopefully this will be the, um, the continuing format for, for the show here in my office, come study, come library, come, yeah, whatever. Um, right, anyway, enough about <laughs> where I'm currently sat. Um, what are we tasting today? Well, um, as, uh, as I've said, uh, uh, and as you probably know, um, that uh, uh, I was uh, recently judging uh, on the judging panel for the World Whiskey Awards, and um, the first round samples that I received were American whiskey, which is always interesting to look at. I quite like a drop of bourbon. Um, so now I uh, know what all the first round samples were, I thought, well, I've got plenty of uh, uh, ammunition, so to speak, for uh, several episodes of the show. So if you like your bourbons, you like your American whiskies, then um, they'll be cropping up quite a bit in the uh, forthcoming uh, episodes of the show. Um, but for today... Let's, uh, let's have a look at uh, the, the lineup. Um, so today's uh, lineup is uh, from the Four Roses Distillery. Um, I must admit, it's uh, not a distillery that I've tasted an awful lot of uh, over the years. So um, it was quite interesting to, uh, to to look at those, and uh, um, I've got uh, four of uh, four of their bottlings in front of me. So um, we'll start with uh, their standard uh, forty percent bottling, um, uh, which is generally called the yellow label because it has a yellow label. Um, nothing like stating the obvious, is there? I guess um, it's uh, aged for around about sort of five years, or uh, the spirit was aged for around about five years. Um, and but like I said, bottle of forty percent. Uh, second sample I've got here is um, in the second range that they do, the uh, the small batch range. Um, this is uh, the two thousand and twelve uh, release, uh, aged for around about eleven years and bottled at fifty five. Point seven, so should be interesting. And finally, these two are from the single cask range that uh, they do, uh, or the single barrel, I should say. Um, this one is um, uh, the eight-year-old bottling, uh, bottled at fifty percent. And the final one is the two thousand and twelve limited edition bottling. Uh, again. Doesn't have an age statement, but it's uh, obviously over eight years old, and it's bottled at fifty-five point six. So, um, hopefully, this should be quite uh, an interesting tasting then. So, um, without further ado, let's uh, let's make a start, then, shall we? Right. Okay. Let's start with the uh, the standard bottling, the yellow label, um, and uh, see what the nose gives us on this then. It's 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 chunky nose. It has to be said. Quite quite broad. Um, nice nice bit of ride. A um, little bit of little bit of um, uh, floral violet. Some chunky oak. Um, some nice dense corn. A little bit of caramel, slightly toasted, um, not burnt, thankfully. Um, uh, yeah, relatively straightforward, but I think you know that's it. Pretty well made. It's uh, it's not bad at all. All right, palate. It's pleasant. It's maybe a little bit on the lightweight side, being only 40%. And there's a lot of oak, which is slightly bitter, but you get some dark chocolate, some cocoa, which is quite pleasant. Um, a little bit short, a little bit um, simple. Um, certainly all the components are there. You've certainly got um, some pleasant uh, corn, a little bit of uh, rye to give it a bit of lift and a bit of bite. I mean, 
absolutely nothing wrong with it. A good sort of, um, well, probably a step above entry level uh, as far as bourbon goes, but certainly I would uh, prefer to drink that over, say, something like uh, the Jim Beam White Label or, God forgive me, Jack Daniels. Um, so, yeah, not a, not a bad start of a 10, I don't think. Mm. Right, okay, so uh, on to the 2012 small batch 11 year old. Um, incidentally, they do another small batch bottling that uh, sort of sits in between these two, uh, which is, I think, if memory is certainly correct, it's about eight, seven or eight years. Seven years old, I think it is. But anyway, this is uh, eleven years old, so uh, we're um, hopefully looking at a uh, quite a considerable step up, step up in class. So, let's have a look. Mmm, that's nice. That's a nice nose. Um, a lot less oak. The spirit is certainly coming through. Um, it's very, very spirit dominated. A little bit of high tone ma. A little bit of. A little bit of violets, some some nice brown sugar, and and a quite a chunk of rye. Um, some some nice biting spicy notes. That really is quite the focus of this nose. Um, let, underneath there is uh, there is some corn, um, but you know the oak is is very very subtle, uh, and you're just getting all this wonderful character from the spirit. Um, like I said, some lovely rye, really grippy, really spicy, and that sort of slightly mari kind of uh, high toned spirit note, which I, I personally find quite appealing. Um, yeah, that's that's a lovely nose. That is very very nice. Palette. Again, the palate is very much like the nose. There's, there's not a huge amount of oak. There's a, a, a lot of um, leeway given to the spirit. Um, so you're getting this almost um, rum-like dried fruit. This is quite an oxidised fruit note going on there. Lots of dried fruit. Quite a, bit, a little bit of oak, you know, um, and combine that with the alcohol, and it's certainly got some bite to it. A little bit of spicy rye as well, but that's that's broad. That's again, you know, the oak is very very subtle. As is the corn character, again, kind of sits nicely in the background, gives it a bit of weight. Um, but that's that's really spicy. Um, like I said, there was a bit of bittering oak, which you know, a bit of coffee, a bit of cocoa, but it's got so much richness that it, it just really balances that out quite quite nicely and um yeah i like that that's 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 stormingly good really enjoyable mm, like that right okay and let's tackle the first of the two single barrel bottling so this is the uh, um single barrel eight-year-old bottled at 50 percent so you know we're obviously stepping down slightly in age statement um so let's uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this end yeah, there's, there's a definite similarity between between the the small batch and the uh, this particular single barrel bottling um again not a huge amount of oak character um it's really allowing that slightly perfumed Mari, lightly dried fruit note coming out. Again, some sort of almost dark wheat um, with a, a little bit of spicy rye. Hmm. Again, that's 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 a nice nose. It doesn't quite have the depth of the, uh, the small batch, but but that's obviously what uh, what an additional four years or so. Um, 
three years, the case may be, we'll, we'll give you. But, you know, it's, it's a nice nose. Hmm. Palette. end loaded it's kind of yeah you get a bit of licorice a bit of dark toffee on the front of the palate and it kind of goes a bit missing somewhere in the middle and then it all comes through again on the finish um, again not exactly heavy on the oak more of your spirit character um, certainly that the, the finish has got some some lovely spicy moments um, but there's something kind of missing somewhere in the middle of this particular one, um, and although you know the quality is pretty pretty good, um, yeah, it's um, that's a perplexing one. It has to be said. Um, like I said, you know, you get a bit on the front of the palette, then then it all just comes comes on the finish. So, you know, again, you know, not not bad, not too shabby, as they say. Right, okay, and uh, on to the final bottling. Um, this is the uh, limited edition uh, single barrel bottling uh, from 2012, bottled at 55.6%. So um, we're expecting great things from this. Um, well, let's hope it's better than the, uh, the than that particular one. But anyway, let's uh, let's see where the nose gives us. Again, you can see the continuation of the of the theme that. The four roses certainly is more more spirit orientated and less oak orientated, which is which is interesting. And um, I must admit, I kind of quite like it. Um, the nose is quite subtle. Some linseed, demerara sugar, little bit of toffee, um, probably a little bit more corn, or certainly. No, maybe not quite so much corn, but that the rye is less intense. Um, it's a lot softer, a lot toffee, a lot toffee. So you know, probably there's a bit more, a bit more oak character, um, or maybe a bit more oak intrusion, as the case may be. Yeah, it's 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 okay. No sir. Spicy, a lot of rye, dark rye, really intense. But again, although it's not as kind of hollow as the um, the other single barrel, it's certainly got a bit more depth. It's all very much coming at the back end. You're getting a little bit of sort of, well, probably quite a bit actually of uh, of sort of wood tannins. Although you're not getting so much of the creamy vanillins. Um, again, so it, it does allow um, the spirit. Uh, to, to to come through more more and um, lovely pepperiness, nice spiciness. Again, it, it just leaves me a little bit cold. Um, it's impressive spirit, no doubt about that. But it's all come comes in on the finish. It's all about the finish, um, and it's not it's not hugely complex. Um, it's it's a pleasant bourbon. I mean, I don't know what the the, the price tag on that, but um, you know, it's not going to be cheap being a, a single barrel bourbon. Um, certainly not a limited edition. And it just it just leaves me a little bit cold. The small batch, mm, absolutely stunning, but something something not there. I don't think. <laughs> Right, okay, so uh, let's uh, let's sum this little tasting up then. Really quite informative, I think. Um, so, what, what have we learned? Um, four roses, 
I like the concept. It's it's more about the spirit character than than the overt oak, uh, and and I think that's certainly certainly a point of difference for it uh, as opposed to sort of some of the other um, bourbon distilleries. I think the the yellow label is is very pleasant. It's uh, you know like I say it's a it's a sort of a, a nice step up from from sort of like your entry level bourbons. Um, a little bit of complexity. It's you know it's it's pleasant. It's certainly not something that you would uh, um, find uh, you know uh, unagreeable. Um, small batch. Um, oh, that was that, that was standout bottling for me. I mean it had everything. Um, it had sort of complexity, it had depth, it had length, um, and that really was quite a, quite a, a superb bottling, and um, uh, that I would certainly be interested in in adding to uh, to our bourbon list because I think that is one that I would I would love to sell, and I would love to get you to taste because I think that is absolutely fantastic. The single barrels, I'm kind of less enamoured with. It has to be said. I mean, you know, you would expect. Um, you'd expect a step up in, in, in class uh, and you'd expect a step up in complexity and interest. I mean, these are single barrels, they're bottled because of their sort of individual nature and, and both of them left me kind of a little bit cold. Um, certainly this one, the, um, uh, the, the, the eight-year-old, uh, it, it was just a bit hollow. You know, it, it, there was a little bit on the front of the palate not a lot going on in the middle and and but an awful lot coming through on the finish and you know that's that that's that's really really interesting um the 2012 again it's just it just left me a little bit cold and and i think um I, certainly from from tasting this this little range i think certainly the um uh the small batch is certainly uh where the strength of uh, of four roses lies um it's not to say that the, that the individual barrels are bad. That they're, they're not. I mean, the quality is very, very good. I just think that sort of when you taste it against a small batch, you you just can see the flaws in in the single barrel bottlings, um, and you know, obviously by vatting together sort of a, a number of uh, of casks. I mean, admittedly, I don't know how many they do. I mean, small batch can mean, I guess, <laughs> anything from two to you know whatever um but that certainly seems to be the, the the one that works for me the best and it certainly has i think the better balance uh, and complexity um whereas you know the single barrels are good quality is good they they just lack somewhere and i think that's obviously where being able to vat in more different casks um kind of uh you know sees sees four roses uh, um better personally but you know so, uh, some of you may well uh, uh, disagree with uh, with that uh, but that's 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 kind of my finding based on on this tasting so um um but overall you know pretty good lineup pretty pretty impressive and uh, obviously like i said you know over the next uh, sort of few episodes depending on what i feel like uh, tasting and sharing with you you know we'll either do some more whiskies or you know we'll do some more some more uh, bourbons i mean um certainly uh, I've got uh, the range from Buffalo Trace, the Eagle Rare 10, 17, uh, and the, the unbelievable George D. Stagg uh, to, uh, to share with you. Um, and you probably know the Stagg is just sort of like probably going to win the World Whiskey Awards for Best Bourbon, although that's not been announced yet. Shh, I've not said anything. Um, but universally, that, that was just unbelievable. I mean, yeah, okay, it's got... That it's it's seventy one point four percent. It's huge. It's big. It's brash. But you know it has so much depth. Um, unbelievably so. Um, but anyway, I'm I'm waffling uncontrollably here. Um, so uh, coming back to uh, this afternoon, I, I kind of I hope you enjoyed this this episode of the show. Um, and um, you yeah, know, basically, um, give me a shout when uh, I've got uh, the small batch in and, um, you know, pick yourself up well. So, um, hope you have a good afternoon and um, see you later.
Touch, now you're up in